Um, now we're going to go ahead and build a new report. So you can kind of see not just opening up an existing report and drilling down through that, but, but what it might take to, to build a new report. So when you're inside this web interface, and again, this, this would only apply if you're using the BI Publisher uh, 11G, which if you haven't used it yet, that would be the version you'd be, be using anyways, or should be using. Go here to New and choose Report. You'll see here, it gives me a list here, part of it's being cut off by that report, but um, use an existing data model. So because we're using BI Publisher and the standalone, again, that's what the foundation is of a JDBC connection and a, um, a data model. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to locate here where we've got some package data models for JD Edwards. In this case, we're going to go ahead and build a purchasing report. Let me go to this purchase order um, data model. So procurement detail data model used to develop open purchase order reports. You hit next. Now with this most recent version of, of the BI Publisher Enterprise, um, there's this wizard and that's kind of we're going to start with that. If you know exact details, you may not if you're an avid user uh, from a development standpoint, uh, most likely you may not be starting with a, a wizard here. You might go directly to using a report editor and opening up and starting from scratch that way. But we're going to just go through the wizards so you can kind of get an exposure to what that, that may entail. So I'm going to choose the Guide Me radio button. So now this is a data model that, that we've already built for JD Edwards for purchase orders, and it's already kind of filtering down to just open purchase orders. So that's the type of analysis we can get. I'm going to go and let's say I want to pull maybe the order number. Maybe I want to get here maybe the business unit and description. How about our alpha name or supplier? Go down here to bring in our item account, with the item or the account, as well as associated description, maybe a order date. And I'm just going to pull in our units open and our amount open. So those will be the, the elements that I want. You'll notice it's kind of creating this table on the right here. That's what my result set is going to be. If I hit next here, and I can either view the report or customize the report layout. Um, most of the time that wizard, that table may not be exactly what you want because you're going to want to add grouping and other types of maybe charts and interactivity in the report. So you might go straight to the custom, customize report layout. We're going to open it, we'll view the report first and then open it up and, and edit it. So I'm going to go ahead and the view report and choose finish. Now it's asking me where do I want to save this report. I'm going to save this in the reports, distribution, and maybe the procurement folder. I'm going to call this purchase or PO ad hoc report. Okay, let's save that. Now some of the things here, again it brings the data back in this data table. You'll notice here if I want to maybe sort this, I could go in and sort the data ascending order. Go ahead and filter down some of the data get the results, um, you know, reflective of whatever I'm, I'm doing from that. So this is, again, just kind of a table that we're going to do a few things that, that uh, spice up this report just a tad. So on the right-hand side here, you'll notice this little drop-down. And in this drop-down, there's a either edit the report or edit the layout. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and edit the layout. And this is now going to open up that tab or that report inside of what this is the layout editor where we can um, create various layouts but also kind of fine-tune and format the report um, to be hopefully exactly what we want. First thing I'm going to do here is just do a little bit of cleanup. For instance, our order numbers, we don't need a default subtotal on that. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click on that and get rid of that. Maybe we don't want our alias appended to the end of our description. Same thing with our order date. And our amount open. Okay. Now, other things you can do, you might want to just reformat some of the widths of some of these fields. If I click on that first cell, which is our order number, under properties here, we can go and change that width to be maybe 100 instead of 191 or something. Um, the date here, maybe we want to format the date without all the other time associated with it. We can do that. 
uh, maybe our, our units, we, and we can actually just shrink up the, uh, the width of that field as well. Our units open, let's go ahead and format that as well, maybe as a numeric without decimals. Same thing with the subtotal. Maybe our amounts we want to be formatted with dollars and with decimals. Okay, so we've got this data table looking better. Now, one of the things that you'll do when you build reports is they have, you'll notice here on the Insert tab, this option here for Layout Grids. So these Layout Grids, you'll use them very heavily to uh, build the different types of reports and format and, and organize the reports in certain ways. So you'll become very familiar with those. And in our training, we kind of use these and kind of show you all the techniques on building interactive reports. And then we also show you the techniques to use to build nicely professionally formatted reports as well. This report is what's referred to as an interactive report, not necessarily a really heavily formatted report. But what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and let's throw a couple different charts above this data table that will help us filter down as we're viewing the report. So if I go here to the layout grid, I can choose insert the layout grid. So say how many rows do you want and how many columns? Just leave it defaulted two and two for right now. Now I want down here, you'll notice here's the upper left cell, upper right cell. So we'll put a chart in there and a chart over there. But I want the table down below that. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of those lower cells and choose join selected cells. If I go back up here to our table, I'm going to go ahead and grab our table and just drag it into that lower section. Okay, So our table is now in the lower part of the layout grid. Maybe I want to go here selecting the upper cell. We want our first chart. I'm going to choose insert and a chart. In this case I want my chart type to be maybe a pie chart. You notice it says drop a value here, drop a series here. The data model that we've selected has all these values here. So you may see more things here than we actually selected in our data table when we did that wizard. That's because even though we only wanted to see those displayed in the wizard, these are all the objects that were already defined in this example of, of the data model. So I want to pull amount open. I'm going to grab amount open on the left, drag that into drop values here. And then I want to drop a series here maybe by our address name or supplier. Then increase the size of that chart to fill up that block. And I'm going to click over on the right. Maybe this chart, we're going to do a bar chart with open amounts broken down by branch or business unit. In this case, I would click on insert and drop another chart. And this time, we're going to go in and pull the uh, amount again. Drop value here. And we're also going to do this one by business unit. Now, when you select these, you can actually click on the chart and either show the 3D effect or show without 3D effect. In this case, we'll go ahead and just uncheck 3D effect just to give you a different flavor there. Let's expand the width of this. Now, as you're building reports, one thing you may want to notice is that when you're in the layout editor, um, you, go ahead and you can make changes. We can save as and say this is a new layout or new tab. Let's go ahead and we'll, we'll do that. So I'm going to do save as. I'm going to call this would be PO report with charts. Okay. You can also click here and choose right here and view it on the fly. So while you're in design, you can kind of see what that's, what's that going to look like when the report is done. All right. So this report here, if we go ahead and click on you know, the chart, you'll notice here it's creating an automatic filter um, when I clicked on that so I can see the other remaining interactive elements are now all just parts emporium. Okay, we can go and resort the data, you know, maybe sort descending order. All right, so, so this would be, again, you have all this interactive nature. This may be very nice for building some of those real quick kind of ad hoc reports, get a graphical view of the data. Uh, and you can also, again, put this back in the hands. Other users can, can run and view this any time and, and uh, interactively um, explore data. 
So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this tab. And I'm going to hit save here. When I hit return, you'll notice the default report that we initially had is here. Right, this was our initial report. We opened that up in the editor and saved it out as a new report here. Um, you can also go in, if I click on the drop down, choose edit report. So we've got the different reports uh, listed here. We can go ahead and edit directly those and make changes to them. You can view them as a list, give different names. This might be a data table. Okay. You can specify which of these you may want to be with interactive versus um, you know, PDF, and you can force these formats within this as well. So let's go ahead and, um, and choose uh, save here.